Hey, how's it going? So I got the M1 MacBook Pro and I've been using it every single day for hours on end for about two months. So in this video, I'm going to show you why I picked the M1 MacBook Pro over other laptops and how's it like using it for two months. So the primary reason I'm getting a new laptop is because I need to edit 4K videos. So obviously I need a laptop that's powerful enough that is able to handle 4K video editing. Number one, that's the most important. Number two, my budget is around 5,000 ringgit. It's not fixed. I mean, I can go up a little bit. That's fine as long as it doesn't stray too far off from 5,000. I need it to be thin and light because I'm going to be carrying the laptop around with me wherever I go for work and also for personal stuff. Number three, the charging brick and the cable itself must be really small and light because also that's something that I'm carrying around with me. It's also super nice if the laptop has a really good trackpad because if it has a really good trackpad, I don't need a mouse. And lastly, bonus as well, it will be great if it's not a gaming laptop because I don't want to be seen with a gaming laptop at my office or also if I work at a cafe or something. So there you go, that's all the stuff that I need. And after I've been binging many, many hours on YouTube watching laptop reviews, I narrowed it down to three specific laptops. So the first one is the new M1 chip MacBook, either the Pro or the Air. The second choice was the Lenovo Legion 5, which is actually a gaming laptop, but it doesn't look too bad for a gaming laptop. And the third one is the Dell XPS 15. So among these three, the M1 MacBook checks all of the boxes and on top of that, it's actually the cheapest. So it was a no-brainer, M1 MacBook it is. But now there's a further choice of should I take the M1 MacBook Pro or the M1 MacBook Air? Because basically it's the same computer, it's the same chip. The only difference is that the MacBook Air doesn't have a fan where the MacBook Pro does have a fan. But considering that I've been editing videos on my previous PC where the fan was just extremely loud, I just couldn't imagine buying a laptop without a fan. It just doesn't make sense to me. So I went with the MacBook Pro and I wanted to get the 16 gigabyte RAM version. However, when I walked to Switch, an Apple retailer store here in Malaysia, they don't carry 16 gigabyte RAM version on stock. So I had to settle with eight gigabytes. The guy said, it's fine, don't worry about it. But I did upgrade my internal storage from 256 gigabytes to 512. And the reason why I did that, even though it's very expensive, is because I will be editing a lot of videos. And although I have an external disk with me already, I want all the current video projects that I'm editing to be within my laptop itself. I don't want to constantly be connected to an external hard drive. That's not what I want, okay? So that's the reason why I got the M1 MacBook Pro. All right, so here's what it's like after two months. So I got the M1 MacBook Pro specifically to edit 4K videos. And this thing flies through 4K video editing and rendering, absolutely no issues whatsoever. So all the M1 chip hype that I see online, the hype is real, this thing can deliver. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, here's an example of one of my 4K video timelines. So let's take a look at the resolution and definitely this is 4K, one of the highest resolution you can do for the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Let's zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, there's a few layers here. There's the A footage, which is down here. This is my main footage. And then on top of that is some of my B footage. You could be swag in golf, either an image or a video overlay. So that's layer two. On top of that, sometimes I have up to three to four layers of, of text or a fusion image like this one want to sell our car between 50,000 to about 55,000. So down here, this is the audio for my main footage. This is me talking. This is for any sound effects. And then the third layer of audio here is the audio. So there's a lot of stuff going on. You can scrub through video playline without any issue. This is 4K. Everything is in 4K, even this one. Take a look at this. The average selling price is about 57,000 ringgit. It's pretty cool. With all the motion graphics and everything, it flies through it without any issues whatsoever. So from time to time, you might have a little too many Fusion titles and it might slow down your computer. And if you want to fix that, it's very simple. Just select these options. Go to playback, go to timeline proxy mode and click on quarter resolution. Or if it's really bad, you can click on half resolution. I just keep it on quarter, that's fine. The second option is go to playback again and then go to Fusion Memory Cache and click on Auto. And that should solve everything. So now the whole clip here is about 14 minutes. So let's take a look. How long does it take to render this video? All right, just want to make sure that it's selected to 4K. Render all. Cores are not even maxed out. 
the GPU is pretty occupied. So this is a really heavy project with a lot of overlays, a lot of videos, a lot of fusion titles. It's to be expected to taking a little bit longer to render. DaVinci is only using about, about 7 out of 8. CPU usage is only about 16%, not even a quarter of the capacity. So let's say you have any issues with playback, especially when you have such a large file, what you can do is generate proxy files for your video timeline. So generate proxy media, there you go. Oh, I can hear the fans kicking in. All right, look at this. The CPU is maxed out, all eight cores of them. GPU is about 75%, and the fan sounds like it's on full whack at the moment. For generating proxy media, that's the worst thing you can do so far that I have discovered. Okay, now I'm gonna open up DaVinci Resolve. As you can see, the touch bar shortcut changes according to whatever app that I have open. When I'm editing videos, I can change the cursor to whatever it is that I want. At the moment, if I want to do trim edit, if I want to cut, if I want to select. And I can go full screen mode or edit mode. I can add a marker if I want to, and I can pick the colors that I want right here, which is really cool. And on top of that, sometimes when you're editing, you got to like zoom in and zoom out, for example, zoom in zoom out and then when you're playing you want to know where you are you can hit shift z or if you don't want to do that you can also click on this shortcut right here and it will show you the location of where the playhead is at the moment in respective to the whole timeline so that's really cool so you can take this out and bring it somewhere else and make this bigger zoom out or zoom in so I find that really cool. Okay, so next thing, we're gonna open up Microsoft Office and you can see that it changes here as well. You can add bullet points right here. You can change the text color, you can select the colors from here, which is really nice. So next we're gonna try Adobe Illustrator. Okay, I'm gonna pull up an image that I have right here. The touch bar shortcut is also change according to Adobe Illustrator. So if you added a layer here, but then I want this layer to be behind the other stuff. I can click on this button right there and I can tell it to bring it forward or bring it backwards. See, look at that, really cool. Or if I can bring everything to the front, bam. That's really, really cool. I don't have to go to the layer itself and right click or rearrange the layers. That's really, really nice. And if I have text, here's our text. If I select this and I can click on this button right there and this is the alignment for the text. And now everything's justified to the right. Look at that. Arrange to left. And I can pick my colors here as well. Click on this for the fill color. And that's my fill color over there. And select over here. And let's see what it looks like. See? I can pick up what the stroke color is as well. If I want it to be very green. Simple. Blue. Green. So these are the shortcut that I use the most. Okay, now we're gonna open up Safari and let's say if I go to YouTube and I play a random video, I'm gonna mute this. And if I hit this button, I can see how long of a video I still have left, which is really nice. I love the touch bar. I don't know why everybody on YouTube saying that it's a gimmick. Maybe they're not using it right, but I think it's an awesome thing to have. And I was a bit disappointed when I hear that the new M1X or M2 MacBooks are not gonna have the touchpad anymore. Next, the Magic Keyboard. It's one of the best keyboards I've ever had on a laptop. Here's what it sounds like. The trackpad is huge and precise. When you press on the trackpad, it vibrates. So it feels like a button, but it's not a button, it's a solid piece of glass. So the benefit of this is that no matter where you press on the trackpad, whether in the middle, at the edge, or at the corner, doesn't matter, it always feels consistent. I don't have to carry a mouse with me, which is really nice. So if you use three fingers to swipe up, it will show all open windows. But the other cool thing is that you can also do add different desktops. For example, this is a desktop for just Google Chrome and this is the desktop for editing videos. So you can swipe between these desktop by using the same three fingers, but swipe right or left. So this is the main one. This is all for Google Chrome and this is for editing videos. So when you want to edit videos, for example, I have my voice recorder here and I have the files that I want to import and export stuff into. So all of this is just dedicated for video editing, which is really nice. So if I want to add a new desktop, so I can just press this button right here, 
And let's say if I want to bring this Adobe Illustrator to that new desktop, I can just drag it there. So this makes multitasking a breeze. This is my favorite feature about the Mac gestures. The built-in mic and speakers are amazing to the point that I don't need external Bluetooth speakers nor an external mic anymore, even for web conferencing. Click here, battery preferences. We're gonna go to usage history. Okay, so this is the last 24 hours. I've been using this laptop uh, yesterday around 8.30 p.m. all the way up to midnight. So that's about three and a half hours. And then I went to sleep around midnight all the way up to about 8.30 this morning. So if you can see during sleeping, it really doesn't drip the battery whatsoever, which is really good. So this morning I started to edit videos around 8.30 all the way down to what time it is right now, 2.17 p.m. where I need it to charge. So that's roughly about six hours. So six hours plus three and a half from yesterday. So that makes it about nine and a half hours of consistent heavy use. The battery life is amazing, it really is. I only have to charge this laptop with heavy use only once a day. It's fast, it stays quiet and cool, and it's very efficient in using energy from the battery. It's simply amazing. Now we're gonna talk about what I don't like about the MacBook. There's only two USB Type-C ports. So if you have one of these with a USB Type-A, there's no way to connect it directly. So you gotta buy one of these, universal dongle. So it has everything. It has HDMI, two USB Type-A, and a USB Type-C for charging. And at the end, there's a SD card reader. It looks a little stupid if I'm honest. And the thing costs 100 ringgit, so it's not the cheapest option out there. But the cool thing is that you can insert the charger directly into the dongle to charge through that one single port. If you don't have a external monitor to attach to your MacBook, I don't think you really need this. Save your money, here's a cheaper solution. It's a USB type A to USB type C adapter. This one goes for less than 10 ringgit. Plug this into whatever device you have and plug it in. So this is a much simpler and elegant solution in my opinion. I like that the MacBook charges through a USB Type-C. And here's the charging brick, which is the smallest among the three laptops that I've shortlisted. The cool thing of having a laptop that charges through USB Type-C is that I can use that same cable for both of the MacBook and also my Android phone. So instead of carrying two chargers, I only need to bring one now. But I still feel that the charger is a little bit heavy. So I bought a third-party charger named Energy 60C, which is a heck of a lot smaller and lighter than the original MacBook charger. So the old one I leave at my home. Uh, the lighter one is the one that I carry around with me to the office. So I put everything in my tech bag and everything fits snugly in there. All right, so this is a big one, software incompatibility. There's two specific apps that I used to use, but that is not compatible with the M1 MacBook Pro. So the first one is the Sony Play Memories Home app. This is for people who have Sony cameras. This app can't run on the new M1 MacBook. Luckily, the included Mac Photos app does a really good job, so this is not really a big issue for me. So the next thing that is incompatible is my Canon printer driver. So unfortunately, I can't use my printer on this new M1 MacBook. So I have to use my old laptop if I wanted to print or scan anything, which is not the end of the world, but it is a little annoying. Most of the important software that I use on a daily basis is working just fine on the M1 chip MacBook. Microsoft Office is fine. DaVinci Resolve is fine, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop is fine, WhatsApp app, Skype app, everything is fine. The only two things did not work, as I mentioned, was the Sony Play Memories app, and I could not install the driver for my printer. Well, there you go. That's my comprehensive review of the M1 MacBook Pro after using it every day for about two months. If the M1 MacBook chip is this good, I can't imagine what the next generation M chips are gonna be like. Pretty revolutionary in terms of personal computing. So there you go, that's my review, and I hope this has been useful to a lot of you. Till we meet again in the next video. Peace.